Hi guys, this is Jar Arts Fight, and I just want to um, just do a quick little talk before I actually start this tutorial. Um, I recorded this back in July, and I'm trying to clear out all my old tutorials I haven't uploaded. That's why I uploaded the um, like breakdown of the Fume Dance OCE, and I'm also uploading this one because the tutorials are never uploaded, so I thought I'd just upload them for you. So a lot of the stuff I do set in it, in it is out of date, but a lot of the stuff, the actual tutorial effect is still um, works and is still in date and stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys like it and I shall see you later. Hi guys, this is Joe Artspy and welcome to another tutorial. Now, in this one we'll be going over some motion tracking. Now, we're not going to be doing 3D motion tracking in this tutorial. We're just going to be doing 2D because 3D is quite in depth, like when I do my 3D motion tracking tutorial I want to go in depth into it like how to really avoid problems, how to like fully track really well in 3D um, and obviously that would be quite a long tutorial like maybe like 25, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that so I don't want to do that on um, a weekday, I might do this that tutorial on Saturday so um, keep watching to the end of the video if you want to see how to see that video on Saturday that didn't make sense but I'm just going to ignore that um, we're going to be doing 2D tracking today, now um, I'll show you what we're going to create in a sec and actually I'll just show you now quickly um, it's pretty cool, people have been asking me how to track 3D stroke but as well as normal motion tracking so I've kind of mixed it all into one tutorial because it can all be done so I'm just going to play this and then as you can see it's the all motion tracked, you've got 3D stroke there and then more text so yeah it's all motion tracked and so I just play it through again one more time See the text is there, the stroke stays there, and then this text stays there, and it's masked and everything. So we just play through this, like you can see, the text is like there, then the stroke appears, it goes through the middle of the stroke circle, and then this text text is hiding behind the wall and it's masked. So we're going to be creating pretty much this effect. We're not going to be going into um, this text here, the masking, because that did take a while to mask it. But obviously, that's just masking, which is pretty much everyone knows how to do these days. Um, we're going to be going over how to motion track this cinematic, put some text in there and how to do the 3D stroke tracking here. So let's just go ahead and hop into After Effects here. Now we're just going to create a new, um, we've got a cinematic here, we're just going to drag that into the composition button down here and it will create a new composition for us. Now I've got to find where my cinematic glitches, so it starts here. So I'm just going to drag this to here, hold shift so it snaps. And I'm gonna to go to where I want it to end, which is like there. So, drag, oh crap, didn't want to do that. Drag this one in, and then right click the gray area, trim comp to work area. So now the composition is the length of the cinematic that we want. Pretty simple, pretty cool trick as well. So if you didn't know how to do that, that's how you do it. Um, and then obviously we need to get rid of the menu, chase, and spectate and things. So just bring the scale up a bit. Right, something like that, and I'm just gonna mess with the position so then to scale it up loads. Um, so now we've got our cinematic all ready to be motion tracked here. Now we're using a plugin called Camera Tracker. Now this is what most people use for 2D tracking. You can use Bujou to 2D track, but obviously um, Camera Tracker stays within After Effects the entire time. So to do this, going to go to Effect, and if you have it, it will be under the Foundry and the Camera Tracker 1.0. Now it, it looks pretty complex at first, but it is actually pretty simple. Um, now, personal, basically, you click track features, solve camera, then create scene in that order. Um, it's pretty simple. I don't really mess with any of these any of these settings unless I've got like a really complex track scene. But I'm just going to leave it as it is. But one thing you can do is where it says render during analysis here, you can untick that. Like when it's ticked, it will actually show you what frame it's on. So it will play through it here, tracking really slowly. But that does mean that it will go really slowly. It will. Um, possibilities of crashing um, you can't and yeah so I generally untick this um, so it just has a little box appears and tells you how much it's got left to do um, another thing is with camera tracker you can't click off of After Effects so if you're doing a long track you have to stay within After Effects like I can't say click track features then go on to like the internet or and watch a YouTube video while it's tracking you have to leave it open um, it is a little bit of a downside but it, it does have a good um, end result so just to get started, we're just going to untick render during analysis and click track features. So as you can see a little box pops up here and it's tracking here. Now just while this is tracking, I just want to say again a big thank you to my subscribers. Like the I've like I, w I went to bed last night with like just under 250 subs, woke up this morning with 275. It's like 
I got 30 emails overnight saying people subscribed to me and they commented on my videos and I'm like, I've never seen kind of a YouTube channel where at least one of my YouTube channels grow this fast. It's like amazing seeing it grow this fast. And I actually saw someone, um, if you've heard of Odin Edits, he's like, I've been a big fan of him for a long time. Um, loved his videos and edits and everything. And then I woke up this morning and I looked through the emails, see who subscribed to me. And I actually saw his name appear. So he's having like an inspiration to subscribe to me. It's kind of quite amazing. I don't know if he's like watching this or not, but if he is, then I love you because you're amazing. Um, yeah, thank you for the amazing support. Um, anyway, back to this, since it's finished here, now depending on your computer, that'll go slower or faster. But obviously the length of the cinematic determines how fast it goes and obviously the uh, specs of your computer. Now I've got 16 gig of RAM, so that is, my computer is quite fast. Um, but if you've got like a laptop, it might go a bit slower. Um, so, right, if we just go back to this, as you can see, We've got all these um, orange crosses with lines now. So if we, have, if we play through this, you'll see that the crosses actually stay attached to the scene and the lines almost like they're drag, so like where they're going. So it looks pretty confusing and stuff, but you don't need to do anything with these. You then want to click the solve camera button. Now the solving camera will go a lot quicker because obviously it's already got the raw data for the motion track, so it's just gonna basically make the camera uh, animation paths and all that kind of stuff. I think that's how it works, I'm not sure. But this will pop up, they'll all turn red here, you click OK. And voila, they're all green and you've got some red, red ones, we just ignore that. And then last thing, create scene. All right, so now you should have two new layers, you should have a camera layer and a null object. Now you can see the null object here is this red box here that's appeared. So if we actually scroll through now, you can see the red box is actually kind of motion tracked. It looks quite bad, but you can change that in a minute. Now, you are pretty much ready to now put in your your text and your stroke, and it's motion tracked now. But one thing you can do, now this is something I do, is you can change where the actual origin point of the motion track is, so where the kind of the main center is. Now, you generally want to put it somewhere near where you're kind of text or whatever your motion tracking is going to be. So I'm going to have the text in this um, kind of section here, but I actually want to put the, the stroke where it was before, and I want to put the origin point um, where the stroke is. So this point here, you can see it's tracked to one of the darker spots on the floor. This one right here, if we click on that so you can see it. The yellow one there. Oh, it's gone now, but. Um, so basically, to put the origin point there, you can, so say you've got your, you've got this, okay, just deselect it. Um, all you want to do is you want to click it, click the cross, then hold down Command or Control, depending if you're on a Mac or not, and this should pop up. Now you want to go to Ground Plane Set Origin. And obviously you can let go of Command, and it will kind of do, it will look like it freezes, but then it will work. And as you can see, the null object is now down there. Now as you can see, you can see it's tracked actually a lot better, so it actually looks a lot smoother there. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to, that's just something I've got into the habit of doing. Um, okay, literally we're pretty much done with the tracking now, you can add in whatever you want. So let's just add in some text here, let's call this, um, I can't spell, tutorial, like that, I'm boring so I'm going to write tutorial. Um, I'm going to click the 3D box here, so where it's, this, where it's this little cube 3D layer, I'm going to tick that, and you can see it moves position. Now if you scroll through this, you can see it's tracked into the scene, dun dun dun. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But the thing is, it's like in the wrong position, it's like not where it's supposed to be. So now what we can do is we can adjust this. So first things first, you wanna hit R on your keyboard to bring up rotation. And the middle middle value will adjust kind of, you'll see if I change it, will adjust this thing. So you can put it, so it's in a frontal view like that. Then the next one along will do the up and down. So you can kind of put it like this. So where it looks about right, something like that. Now I'm just going to move it along, move it to the middle, move it up. But as you can see, it looks like it's where it should be, but as, as we go through it, you see it's actually a lot further back in the scene. Now to change that, you want to grab the blue arrow here and move it to forward quite a bit, so something like that. So now you can see it's just in front, so move it back a bit f more, something like there. Like so, and voila, we now have text tracked into the scene. Now obviously you can then change the scale of the text here still, and it won't adjust the position, you can then kind of move it all. As I play through it, you see it's still tracked in. That's just a little pet peeve I've got, I don't like it when the 
the camera tracker goes through actual objects so it's going to adjust it so it goes through the hole in the O hopefully oh yeah look at that I'm so good goes through the hole huh. I got skills <laughs> Okay, so now we've tracked in some text. That's pretty much how simple it is to track 3D, 2D text into a cinematic. Now let's go in and look at some 3D stroke. So as normal, you just want to make a solid. So Command Y, I'm going to call this stroke, uh, make comp size, and OK. Now I'm going to use the 3D stroke thingy by Taser. Um, now this is just so I get his settings. Um, and what you can do is, so we're basically using the same method we did in the stroke scope tutorial. Um, you don't need to have any of these, um, like that preset to do this. Um, you can just do it yourself, like using the method in my previous 3D stroke tutorial. But we want the stroke to appear roughly here. So we're just going to drag this along to roughly there. Okay, right now it's doing stuff completely wrong. It's not 3D. It's like completely not what you want. So, like normally we're going to go to presets in the 3D stroke, change it to circle cutout, and where it, in the middle frame where it's thickness, you want to bring that down something like I use 2.9 in the example video, like so. And then I'm going to squash this bit so it's more of a circle. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, so now, as you can see, we've got our circle yet, but it's not tracked. It's not 3D tracked at all. Um, and I actually want this to last for quite a bit long, so I'm going to drag these last two keyframes out of it. I'm then going to go to here, I'm going to go to something like there. I'm going to make another keyframe but make it 2.9. So basically the width doesn't change at all during the duration of the stroke. So now it's a bit longer and it looks cooler. Right, so now we're going to make it 3D. So if we hit go to where we can actually see the stroke, hit the 3D cube box again. And voila, it's 3D. However, it's in the completely wrong place. It's like over here. So now, to make it easier to position this where we want it, we want it to be roughly right in the middle here. So what we can do is, where it says active camera here, you can change that to custom view one. Now I use custom views because it makes it easier. Now you can kind of get the basic idea of what's going on in your scene by the, the, the pink box here. This is your camera. So if we go back to the beginning, Ooh, let it auto save. Um, that's the, oh, there we go. So as you see at the beginning, the camera is here. So as we scroll through it, you'll see the camera gets closer and it goes through the text. So you kind of know the, the path of the camera now. So we know that we want the um, to be kind of horizontal to this white box. So we know the camera's facing this way. So what I want to do is hit the R again and change the, the middle rotation to something like that, where it's kind of the same kind of angle, I guess. You can then bring the scale up by holding Shift S so you don't get rid of rotation and bring the scale down quite a bit. I brought the scale down to something like, I think I did 9 because obviously the scale is quite big. Um, kind of make it look like it's in the middle of the thingamajiggy, the camera. You can then go back to active camera and you can see it's there. So you can then obviously bring this to where you want it, stick it there. I'm just going to change the colour to like a pink. I think pink strokes look awesome. Change the star glow to star prism, like I always do. So now, if we watch through this, you see that the stroke appears there, and it's actually customly tracked in. And obviously, you can bring the scale up a bit more, as soon as we're further away. Something like that. So it looks like we're a bit closer to it. So now it goes through the middle. We can kind of adjust it a little bit to the left. So we go through the middle of it now. Um, that is literally how simple it is to track um, 2D track in After Effects. Once you get the camera track camera tracker plugin, it's super easy to motion track, and obviously it's it looks so nice. Like you've got the text here, and then you've got voila, this appears, which is completely motion tracked in, and then you can have something else here, and you can then mask it behind this, like I did in the example there. As you can see, the text is kind of behind it. So as you go scroll through it, more of it gets revealed and stuff. Um, literally, this is something I definitely recommend you get if you don't have Camera Tracker. Um, it's such a useful plugin, and it, the, the end result look, looks brilliant. Um, yeah, so I if I'm gonna kind of start a new type thing now. I know quite a lot of people do this, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, 
my tutorials will be uploaded every Tuesday and Thursday. Now they're like the two tutorial days of the week. Now, obviously last week I was uploading tutorials pretty much every day, um, but the end result of that was I ran out of ideas quite quickly. Um, so I didn't have as many ideas that I could do this week. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do two tutorials a week on Tuesday and Thursday. Now this obviously this is Thursday, it's good, it's Thursday today as you can see. Um, but no, and the plan is, if both these tutorials get a combined 40 likes, so say like the tutorial there, eh, Tuesday's tutorial gets 20 likes and Thursday's tutorial gets 20 likes, then there will be a bonus tutorial on Saturday. Um, so yeah, if they get combined 40 likes, then it will be on Saturday. Or we, like say this one could get 15, uh, Tuesday's could get 25 and it will still be 40. So if you get combined 40 likes, then I will be doing a bonus tutorial on Saturday. Um, and this Saturday, if we get get the 40 likes, then it would be the um, 3D tracking. So going into 3D tracking and how to properly 3D track with really nice effects. Um, if not, if we don't get the 40 likes, then that would just be uploaded on Tuesday instead of um, on Saturday. So if you guys really want to see these tutorials, then you better get liking because it's like almost like if you want the video you've got to earn it almost so hit that like button guys be sure to comment saying on some other tutorials you'd like to see um, and yeah big thank you again for 275 subscribers it's amazing um, and yeah I'll see you guys in the next tutorial